Hey guys, it's Michelle from Florida Keys Birding, and today we're talking about painted bunting, migration routes, U.S. and Florida flyways. Um, we're going to talk about some detailed information about um, painted bunting migration specifically. Um, my voice is not so great today because I'm a little bit under the weather, I'm not really up to par, <laughs> but uh, you know, just bear with me. So let's get right into it. Um, so uh, who generally arrives first? Um, so the male will typically arrive one week before the female um, to get the nest ready for the females to arrive in the springtime. So that makes sense. Um, so you might see um, a lot of males coming through Florida um, before you'll see the females during migration. In the fall, um, I'll see males usually um, initially with females and then I usually see the females hang around and just kind of stay the winter. Not to say that there's not any males around, um, you know, but I, I don't know, it's odd because I pretty much only see females at my feeder during the winter time. I do, I, maybe once or twice I've seen a male, but, um, but yeah, so I'm not sure what that's about, but, um, but yeah, that's how it goes um, with the arrivals, especially for spring. So what time of day would a painted bunting migrate? Um, the painted buntings are actually a nocturnal migrant, like most songbirds. Raptors, on the other hand, you know, they would be a daytime migrant, um, but most songbirds are nocturnal migrants and the painted bunting is one of them. So a good question is, do painted buntings return to the same areas each year? So the studies show, according to um, the Audubon Society, that in Georgia there was a study done um, that most males <clears throat> did return. So 19 out of 20 in one year and 13, 12 out of 13 in the next year, and they did retain the same territory as the previous year. I always wonder that because I do get, um, I always wonder if it's the same bird that comes to my feeder every year because I get the same two little females that come every year. and. I don't know. I get a, I get a um, one a hummingbird. The same thing. So, but it is shown that with most birds, they do come back to the same territory. And so, with the painted bunting, the study shows that they do. So, for Western populations, <clears throat> for the painted bunting migration routes, um, they're a short to medium neotropical migrant. Um, and the Western populations do something specific that the Eastern populations don't do. Um, instead of molting before they uh, head down to their wintering grounds, they will go ahead and migrate, stop in a specific area during migration to molt, and then they will go ahead and continue on heading down to their um, southern wintering grounds like South Arizona, um, North and in Northern uh, Sinaloa, Mexico. So these are areas that they will stop there and interrupt their migration to molt and um, they will go and, you know, continue on south for uh, wintering. Okay, so um, as far as uh, painted bunting migration routes for eastern populations, let's take a look at that. So I have a little map here. Um, you can see that they, uh, the eastern population is, is a short distance migrant um, and they do molt before fall migration. So they don't do what the western populations do. They will go ahead and do their molt beforehand, which makes sense because I don't think I've ever seen um, I don't think I've ever seen uh, any painted buntings come before their molt <laughs> down here in South Florida. So, um, so it shows on the map here for the um, for the eastern populations. You've got the ones that go uh, to Florida in the winter, and then they're along the coast of Georgia and the Carolinas for the summer for breeding, and then also down to Cuba and um, the Caribbean in the Bahamas for the winter. So you can see that they'll come down in the fall and then they'll go up in the spring. And then for the western populations, you can see a route here where it looks like they will breed in Texas, Oklahoma, you know, Louisiana, these areas, um, and then they will either migrate south 
through Mexico. It looks like here, Sinaloa, they'll stop and do their molt, and then they'll continue on down the Yucatan and to Central America um, for wintering. And then if, they, if they're in Louisiana, it's also believed that instead of them um, going through like and stopping in Cuba and then hopping over, um, it's believed that they will go straight across the Gulf to the Yucatan, uh, which actually a lot of birds do. Most warblers do that route. Um, not all of them, but quite a few of them do. So it says they will overwinter in the Yucatan. So, um, and, and they, they believe this due to the lack of sightings um, in Cuba <clears throat> um, during migration for these um, Western populations. So it's different. They're actually different, the Eastern and the Western. So this is a little bit of a, of a map. And this is the source, the researchgate.net, um, where you can find this map. So sometimes they are seen out of range, and it's kind of crazy because this is quite out of range here. Um, for breeding, Colorado, Wisconsin, Quebec, Nova Scotia, um, that's, that's quite far north for breeding. So apparently they have been reported up there. Um, so it says uh, far fewer reports in fall and winter for these locations. And another, another, um, another area that they've been seen, um, spring reports have been seen in Massachusetts, ranging from April 17th to May 30th. So that would be also, you know, for spring migration. And then um, Cape May, New Jersey, from May 14th to June 12th. So yeah, that would all be for breeding season. So these are um, some other areas a little bit farther in the eastern population. So that's pretty interesting that some of them do go that far north, but it's not like a regular um, thing for these, uh, these areas. So let's talk about um, migration routes for spring in the east coast for their um, east coast patterns and arrival time. So this is where when you can kind of um, <clears throat> expect to see them as far as spring migration. And that's what's coming up next. So this is what we can look forward to on the east coast of the United States. Um, so in the Florida Keys, you can expect to start seeing them in late April. Um, and then east and central Florida, um, mid-April, you can start to expect to start to see them in Georgia um, April 16th through the 24th is a good period of time South America I mean South America South Carolina April 19th to the 23rd males will arrive first and about 10 days later for the females and then North Carolina mid-April so um, so yeah these are the this are the times that you can kind of expect them and um, you can kind of know whenever uh, these birds are going to be coming your way depending on where you live. And then this is for the western populations, generally Mississippi, you're going to see them uh, April 8th to the 26th, Louisiana, um, early April, but also as early as March 11th. In Rockport, Texas, April 9th to the 27th is the average. Um, Houston, Texas, April 2nd through the 27th. Um, Oklahoma, late April. And Missouri, early May, but most arrive mid-May. So this is when you can expect to see them for spring for their migration routes for the western populations. Okay, so um, where do they spend their spring and summer in the breeding season? So you can see a map here from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Um, there's a, you can, uh, if you go to the website, you can press play right here and it'll show you, um, you know, the animated version where you can see you know they're coming up and then they're going back and then they're coming up and going back from migration south and north fall and spring and so on um, but they do spend their um, breeding time for western species uh, in northern mexico southern midwest texas um, oklahoma gulf and kind of these gulf uh, coast states over here um, and you know some uh, in missouri as well and then for the east, we've got the eastern populations that you're going to be able to see in uh, most northern east Florida and the southeast coast of Georgia um, and the Carolinas, and even a little bit into North Carolina. And you can kind of, like I said, you can go to their website and, and take a look at this. 
All right, so for um, painted bunting fall migration roots, so let's talk about for fall. We just finished fall migration. Um, so Western populations, it's going to be Kansas late August to September 21st, um, Oklahoma September to October 26th, uh, Missouri August to September 19th. And then in Eastern populations in Florida, you can see them uh, usually between September 1st and November 9th, which, you know, I normally see them probably uh, last week of September to first week of October. That's usually the time that we see them in the Keys. Um, but I did see them a little bit earlier this year. I have to go back and look at the date when I first spotted them because there was a... I feel like there was kind of like a burst, uh, <laughs> a burst of painted buntings um, for like a week and then suddenly there was like another burst of them but mostly females so um, that's just just my own observations but the earliest sighting reported was July 22nd wow that's super duper early the only birds that I've ever seen that early are black and white warblers and blue gray gnat catchers so that's pretty interesting so in Texas, um, they're recorded usually late July to mid-October, northern Mexico, July through October in the north, um, late July through October in the north, Costa Rica, um, overwintering residents have been recorded late October and they stay um, until late March, and um, Panama, late October to late April, um, Caribbean uh, areas that's going to be mid-October um, and then most numerous during November in the Bahamas. So where can you find them during fall migration? Um, if this is one that passes through your state, you're going to see them passing through your state in either Florida, different parts of Florida, parts of Texas, and parts of Louisiana, and of course, you know, down into Mexico and, and stuff like that. So where will they stay? Where will they spend their late fall into winter and their non-breeding time? So they're gonna stay in central Mexico, southern Florida, southern Mexico, the Yucatan, and Central America. So this is where they're gonna stay, this is, this is where they're gonna hang out during their non-breeding time, and this is where they go and do their snowbird thing. <laughs> that always got, it's funny, migrating birds, I wonder if um, that's kind of where it came from. You know, like the snowbirds, they kind of do the same thing. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Um, and then the flyways for spring migration, it's kind of the same. They're going to come right back up. Eastern populations will fly through Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Western populations through Texas, Louisiana, and the Gulf Coast states. So this is kind of like a detailed picture of um, migration routes, migration patterns, where they spend their time. They won't stay in just one place. They're going to be here, there, and everywhere like a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> um, so if you want to uh, track spring migration with us, um, be sure to join the Facebook group, Florida Keys Birding, Reptiles, Wildlife, and Plants, um, and then uh, Instagram as well um, to see what, you know, what we're finding during migration at Florida Keys Birding. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure that, you know, you track migration with us. Even if you don't live in the Florida Keys, it's great because you'll know that the birds are on their way when they hit the Florida coast and they hit our islands. You'll know that birds are coming up by you if you're up north or in the northern states. Um, I try to post every day during migration when things start to heat up at least um, when when things are just starting every couple of days so um, I post my finds and other people in the group also post their finds so you can kind of see what's on the way what's headed your way depending on where you live all right thanks guys I hope you liked this um, detailed information about uh, migration patterns for this bird and if you like this video let me know so I can make more about other birds I love migration I feel like it's so interesting um, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Thanks. Bye.